Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Pokey Oz here. We're going to continue the series on Sword and Shield investments, particularly looking at sealed product. We've already talked through Sword and Shield Base. We've already talked through Darkness Ablaze. I know we've skipped one, so we're going to get on to Rebel Clash today. So, <clears throat> gone through Sword and Shield Base. Seen some serious climbing this set. Gone through Darkness Ablaze, which everyone's aware has remained pretty stagnant throughout the last, well, ever since release. Pretty much bang on three years ago for Darkness Ablaze. So today we're going to have a look through Rebel Clash. I know we're, we're jumping back, but um, we'll take a look at that. Remember, three main criteria when we're looking at sealed product investment. The print run, which sort of coincides with supply and demand. Uh, the hits, how good are the hits, uh, sort of the big hits, and also those hits around that, you know, five, ten dollar above $10 mark. And the third one is the rip factor or the fun factor. So how fun is it to open and also how fun is it to sort of keep sealed in your collection? How good does it look as a display piece? Let's jump in. Can we make money off Rebel Clash? Right, let's get started with criteria one, print run. Also coincides with sort of supply and demand. Keep in mind, we've got three criteria, each scored out of five. The higher the score overall, the more investable the sealed product. So, print run, Rebel Clash. Print run sort of coincides, I think, quite strongly, like I've said in the other videos on Sword and Shield investing, with the PSA pop report. 20,000 for a set that's three years old is relatively low in modern standards. So, print run, I think, on Sword and Shield Rebel Clash was actually relatively low. Like, the demand absorbed the print pretty quickly. We haven't seen any major reprint in the last probably 18 months. As a result, I'm scoring Rebel Clash 4 out of 5 for print run. Pokemon was hot at the time. The pandemic spurred things along. The supply was absorbed. The demand absorbed the supply. And we've, like, we've already seen some increase in Rebel Clash value, which we'll get to in a second. We'll have a look at some charts um, regarding sealed pricing. Keep in mind, these videos are all about what we can park our money in now to make money. Rebel Clash has already seen some appreciation. I suppose we could sort of use this set as a bit of a guide. Can we make further money off it? Well, a score out of four out of five on the first criteria is strong. Let's uh, move on to the next. Criteria two, the hits. Let's score this one out of five. So, our two main chase cards, I suppose you could class it into three, but Boss's Orders being the biggest hit. That's sitting about $45 raw. Sonya as the second main chase card sitting at about $30 raw. And Cinderace, VMAX, Rainbow being sort of the, well it is, it's the fire starter for the Sword and Shield era. So it's the Charizard of the Sword and Shield era. Uh, that card's sitting at about $18 to $20 raw. So, <clears throat> and there's a, there's a handful of other cards that are sitting above $10 raw. So I wouldn't, like it's a bit of a shame that there's not a Pokemon as a hit. Or well, the main hit, I should say. But, you know, there's still some nice chase cards in here. So I'm going to score this 3 out of 5. Which is maybe a touch generous. But you do have the three main Sword and Shield starters in rainbow form. There are a couple of nice uh, trainer cards. 3 out of 5 might be a little bit generous. But I think that's what it deserves. Criteria 3, the fun factor. I think it's no surprise that there's, like, there's better Sword and Shield sets to open. More fun to open. More chase cards, old arts. Rebel Clash doesn't have that. So I wouldn't say it's the funnest set to open, but I actually think both the booster box and particularly the elite trainer box, they have that fun or cool factor as a display piece. Man, that elite trainer box with the, the Copperaja V Max sitting on the front there, that's a good looking elite trainer box. I know it's not your Umbreon or Charizard or Rayquaza or Dragonite on the front, but it's cool. So in terms of a score for fun factor, I'm going to give this set 3 out of 5. I think it's okay to open, like it's no Crown Zenith or it's no Evolving Skies to open with really strong chase cards, but I'm basing the majority of that 3 out of 5 on how cool it is, the fun factor to keep it sealed. They're both cool looking products. So overall score, 10 out of 15. Bit of a sneaky sleeper set, Rebel Clash. Just thought I'd show a couple of prices starting with booster box pricing over the last year has grown significantly in the last 12 months, currently sitting at 212 per box. 
started the year at about that 180 mark per box so it's gone up around 30 dollars the booster box and i just thought i'd bring up the etb price as well so currently sitting at 164 and over the last 12 months geez it's gone from about 95 dollars a box to 164 that's that's some pretty rapid growth in 12 months Remember, investing is anywhere you park your money with the aim of getting a return. So seeing it increase in value. So can we make money off Sword and Shield Rebel Clash? My short answer is yes. We've already seen some fairly organic growth in the product, the sealed product, since it's sort of gone out of rotation and the print run stopped. I honestly think we're just going to see some natural organic growth over the next 12 months, two years, five years on Rebel Clash. It's not going to be, it, like it's not an A tier or an S tier set. I think it's a solid B tier, maybe even a C plus. It, there's nothing special, but it wasn't printed to the level of some other Sword and Shield sets. It's a really nice display piece. People are going to want it in their sealed collection. There are some okay hits inside it, I mean, hindsight's always a good thing. Buying it at uh, $90 a box or $100 a box when it was in its first or second print run would have been fantastic. You would have 2.5x your money almost in three years, which is a great return. But I still don't think it's a bad place to park money, especially for a display piece. Not a bad set.